sanity. My hair is straight for the first time in a really long time. It won't last. All right. <clears throat> I gotta get into the mood after my shock yesterday of what happened. What are we doing? <sighs> okay. Hmm, I wonder what Sarah would like, amused to myself. It's finally the weekend, so I have the time to shop around. My first week has been quite a success, so I'm treating myself and Sarah. She threw me a party after all. I feel like she deserves a little something to show my gratitude for her. Maybe some cute earrings or a new bag? Hmm, I sigh out loud as I scan the jewellery around me. What Sarah really wants is a super expensive camera lens, but I'm not about to buy her that. No way. I look at some golden necklaces until I notice something in the corner of my eye. Red hair. We just can't get away from this fucking dude. My eyes shift to the, to the left, curious about this person in the distance. That's when I realise it's Kane, the store clerk from Boom Mart. Also, I actually edited that epilogue yesterday. It was quite frustrating and I can't, I can't get rid of the penis completely. But I made a valiant effort. Okay, ugh. How many times do I have to run into this guy? I thought I had seen the last of him on Olymp Olympus's opening day. I accidentally pressed shift. Wait, what is he doing? Kane picks up one of the silver necklaces from the display and slips it into his pocket. God, he's thieving again. I gasp out loud. He's stealing again. My gasp alerts Kane, who suddenly looks up and meets my eyes. There's a long stretch of silence between us. I open up my mouth to yell out for security so that they catch Kane and prevent him from stealing again. But suddenly, Kane runs up to me, so close until we're pressed up against each other and my voice gets swallowed in, in his sweater. I back off immediately, confused at suddenly getting a mouthful of wool and whiff of cologne in my face. Help! This woman is stealing! Oh, what a bastard. He suddenly yells out loud, alerting everyone around us. Kane gives me a salute with his hand while sticking out his tongue at me, slowly backing off. I blink at him. That's what I wanted to say. Then I notice that there's a necklace ever so slightly tucked away in my pocket. Oh, that weasel. He planted it there. Before anyone can see it, I take the necklace out of my pocket and put it back on display. When I cast my eyes upon him to glare, he immediately makes a run for it. He thinks he can get away with framing me for theft? Don't you dare, I yell at him and start my pursuit. No way I'm letting him go this time. He's not only tried to steal, but he tried to set me up as well. He deserves to be taught some manners, this stupid thief. Kane is able to lose me through the maze of clothing racks, but I manage to track him down toward the changing rooms. I pause a little before entering the changing rooms, wondering if Kane really thinks I'm that stupid and can't see him hiding in one of the rooms. I casually walk towards one of the two occupied changing rooms, my lips pressed into a thin line. I scan the shoes, sticking out at the bottom of the curtain. They're Kane's shoes. Scratch that. Not only does he think I'm stupid enough to not know, he himself is stupid enough to think he could get away with hiding in the changing room. I slide open the curtain with a loud gotcha. I'm greeted by two lonely shoes on the floor. The rest is completely empty. Kane isn't here. Behind me, I hear another curtain sliding open, followed by a flurry of footsteps. Red hair bobs away in the corner of my eye. My face heats up as I realize he duked me. That sly fox. Feeling rage build up inside of me because he got the better of me, I chase after him. I can't help but feel a burning desire to set him straight. I lunge after Kane when he's starting to slip out of my range. My newfound fury manages to propel me forwards enough so that I body slam Kane into one of the changing rooms. We stumble right through the curtain, landing on the floor. Oh, we've got a we've awkward CG. Ugh, Kane grunts in pain as his body smacks against the wall. It's a mess of arms and legs as I'm completely tangled up with Kane, who is groaning in pain and cursing underneath his breath. Get off me, he hisses loudly. I'm trying, I hiss back at him. I try to pick myself up, almost succeeding before I feel a sharp pain on my head and I'm pulled back. Ah, I shriek out involuntarily. My hair, it's tangled with the zipper of Kane's pants. Literally how? How does that even happen? It must have gotten stuck when I tackled him earlier. I place my hand on top of his knee, trying to create some distance between my face and his groin, because I would definitely rather be staring at anything else at that moment. What are you doing? He demands angrily. I'm stuck. Kane starts to squirm around, pulling and tugging my lock of hair along, basically torturing me at the moment. That really hurts. Stop your squirming, I bark at him. Then stop shoving your face into my crotch and get your hands off of me already. Oh. I promptly take my hand off his knee and then reach for his zipper. Kane's eyes are wide in shock as he sputters loudly. Dominant always, my ass. Where are you touching me? My fingers slide down my traitorous lock of hair. 
which has gotten tangled with his zipper button and I try my best to untangle it. Well, if it's on his button, not his actual zipper, then that makes a bit more sense. Suddenly, Kane's head is on- uh, hand is on top of my head, trying to push me away. Stop, he yells. This is sexual harassment. What, like that time you walked out naked? He was in his own house, I suppose. But he knew we were there. Whatever. Ignoring Kane's pleas, I managed to free some of the tangled hair, but Kane's consistent struggling prevents me from freeing myself completely. Would you just quit it? I yell back at him. He's making a mountain out of a molehill. Stay still so I can get it out. Well, that's... phrasing. Ah, almost got it. I twist the hair around one more time and it finally untangles from the button. Freedom. What is the meaning of a slow clerk appears behind us, dumbstruck, dumbstruck at the position of me and Kane, that me and Kane have found ourselves in? The three of us are completely quiet for what feels like the longest second in the world. Then blood rushes to my cheeks and I realise the implication of the position that we're in and I sit up straight. No, wait, this is not what it looks like. I start to protest, trying to salvage what's left of my dignity. I don't know what you two were thinking, but sexual conduct is forbidden in the premises. Please leave at once. No, I shout. It's not- I mean, this guy's a thief! I point at Kane. Oh. Kane's not saying anything. He simply looks bewildered and his face is eerily pale. Leave now before I call the police and fine you two. Kane is the first one to move. He scrambles to get up and he dashes out of the changing room, picking up his shoes from the other room in the process. Still beat red, I mutter out a small sorry under my breath and quickly leave the changing area. I try to shield my face with my hands, hoping no one in the store recognises me. I've never been so embarrassed before. Kane is not far behind me, also rushing out of the store after putting his shoes back on. When the both of us have made our way out of the store, I spin around on my heel to scold Kane. I'm so angry at him right now. Look at what you did. You almost got us fined. I lash out at him. Huh? Me? You were the one touching me in a weird places. He snarls right back at me. I was trying to get my hair loose, you idiot, I explain. I wouldn't be in that stupid position if you weren't going around stealing things again. Kane bites down on his lips and he gives me this deathly glare. I wasn't stealing at all. How dare you accuse me of theft? Gee, I wonder why I'd accuse a thief of stealing when he's running away from me after I call him out in the act. I roll my eyes at him. I was running away because you were chasing me, he replies angrily. I wasn't chasing. And then you body slammed me into Jesus Christ, woman. What the hell do you eat for breakfast? Steroids? Imagine trying to defuse the situation. Mm, couldn't be me. My cheeks feel even warmer. I do not eat steroids, I say loudly. You're just too weak in comparison. Look at how skinny you are. Do you even eat breakfast at all? I retort back. I do eat. You should try milk sometime. Maybe you can grow a little bit taller while you're at it, I say. The insult effortlessly leaving my lips. Yeah, you baby five foot seven boy. That's my height. I'm tall for a girl. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't... Height is whatever. That seems to have hit a nerve because Kane's face pulls into a skull. Oh, come on, five seven isn't that short, is it? And maybe you should start leaving cookies out of your diet because you weigh like a ton of bricks. I gasp. Are you saying I'm fat? Yes, yes I am. Why, you little rat. I shake my fist at him. I take a deep breath to calm myself down. Then I stick out my hand, palm up. Give it to me. Kane cocks an eyebrow at me, then scoffs loudly. I'm not giving you shit. Cough it up. I know you stole it. You have to return it. I didn't steal anything, he stresses. You need to get your eyes checked. I, I think the biggest problem for me um, with this MC, because like every root MC feels like a different MC in my eyes. Um... My problem is she's so indignant about stealing. Who cares that much? Who has such a hard on for, like, for somebody stealing a piece of jewellery? Again, it's kind of a different story if it's like a small business that you shouldn't do that. But like, I don't know, it's just like, what is, why are you putting your nose into this person's business all the time? Like, just because they're stealing, like, you, you're clearly getting in trouble with him as well, just stop. Like, I don't understand her, like, her, why she's doing it I don't I don't know why it seems to be that um they just think that we're gonna be like oh well it's normal to not want people to steal personally if I saw someone stealing I wouldn't run after them or point it out again if it was a small business I'd be like I'd probably go up to the owner and be like you know that person stole from you you know but you know keep it on the DL kind of thing um but if it's like a, I don't know, if it's like a fucking Tesco or something, I'm not gonna say shit. I'm just gonna avert my eyes and be like, mm. sorry, anyone who works at Tesco or any big Walmart, whatever, right? 
whatever. What? I scoff. Unless that's a banana in your pocket, you definitely stole something. <laughs> Kane's cheeks turn a fiery red. Why do you want to feel me up there too, just to check? Are you some kind of sexual deviant? I'm not gonna feel you up. I'm not a sexual deviant, you little prick. Are you sure? I feel like I need to protect myself from you right now, you pervert. Kane grabs both his arms and visibly shakes his entire body to portray his disgust. Gross. I angrily point my finger at the bulge in his pocket. Then what the hell is that, huh? Kane effortlessly slides his hand into the front of his pocket and pulls out a black wallet. He then crudely thrusts his hips forwards while grabbing his crotch with his other hand, keeping his wallet in the air. He's so vulgar. Suck on that, I didn't steal shit. In a flash, someone rudely bumps into us and then bolts away on foot. His hurried footsteps stomp loudly on the ground as Kane and I both stare at the perpetrator in shock. He's got Kane's wallet in his hands. Well, karma, baby. My wallet, Kane cries out. Stop, you fucking thief. Well, Kane dashes after him and I'm after him and I'm not that far behind because, you know, we see a apparently like, I don't know, some thief killed both of our parents, uh, you know, when we were very young and now we just have a like a hard on for like calling him out. Kane dashes after him and not far behind, also taking chase. No way am I going to let that guy run off with someone's wallet. We see. Why do you have such a hard on for running after thieves in particular? We run past groups of people who spring out of our way. The thief is still within our sight, wildly running away from us. He manages to exit the mall, so we follow after him. Out on the street, the thief turns a corner and disappears into an alley. Kane doesn't hesitate for a second and follows the thief. Me, on the other hand, I keep running, taking the long way around and sprinting as much as I can to be able to cut him off at the other end of the alley. If Kane is on his tail end as well, then we can corner him and catch him. My breath comes out as raspy little gasps. I haven't used my body like this in such a long time. I'm running out of stamina fast. I round the corner of the building and I'm right next to the exit of the alley. Footsteps approach and I don't waver at all as my instinct takes over and I tackle whoever pops out of the alley. The thief and I both go down onto the pavement. I quickly land on top of him. His screams are muffled underneath my skirt. I quickly scan the area and see if he's dropped the wallet onto the ground from where I tackled him. I lunge forwards to grab the wallet while the thief quickly pushes me off and gets up from the ground. Hey, stop, Kane yells, running out into the open. The thief makes a mad dash towards safety and runs out of the alley completely. I'm sitting on the pavement with my knees scraped and bleeding while my hands are throbbing painfully, but I've got Kane's leather wallet. I can't believe I managed to steal back a wallet from another thief. I'm good at stopping thieves. Uh, I could go pro, maybe I'm in the wrong profession. Kane walks towards me when he sees the wallet in my hands. There's a look of shock on his face. There's that steroid strength again, he says. I got it though, I say with a grin. I fan myself with his wallet. Okay, golden star for you, now give it back. Kane tries to grab the wallet, but I pull it out of his reach so he grabs nothing but air. He glares at me. Seriously, give it back. Now you know what it feels like to be stolen from, don't you? I say condescendingly. Shut up, just give me my wallet. Kane steps over my body and his fingers wrap around mine, plucking them off the leather. I tug it away from him, causing him to almost stumble over my body, but he quickly balances himself in an upright position. He growls at me. Jeez, a simple thanks would have sufficed. You're so impatient. I finally get up from the ground and my knees sting in pain. Ouch, all that adrenaline rushing through my veins made me forget that I actually tackled someone and floored him, scraping my knees open. Ugh, this is gonna hurt walking home. I don't care, Kane makes a quick show of the hands, plucking the wallet from me. His hands? Kane ignores me and opens up the wallet to count all of the money, making sure the thief didn't steal anything while he was on the run. I should report you to the police, I muse out loud. He's such an ungrateful little shit. Kane sticks up his nose. I thought we established I didn't steal anything. For in the future, I mumble under my breath. No doubt this little troublemaker will try and steal something again, which only serves to remind me how I got kicked out of the store just now. I hope they don't ban me indefinitely. It was a legitimate misunderstanding. Whatever, I got my wallet back. See ya. Kane stuffs his wallet back into his pocket and briskly walks past me. He shoves me aside and I narrow my eyes in pain. The cuts on my knees are making my eyes tear up. When Kane sees the expression on my face, he raises both of his eyebrows. I barely touched you. Why are you making that face? I sigh and lift my skirt up enough to inspect my knees. Both of them have been scraped from tackling that thief earlier and skidding across the pavement. They're bleeding and dirty. I should really do something about it before I leave. Oh, he says in a soft voice when he sees the state I'm in. Kane looks towards the street, then back at me, a look of conflict etched into his expression. He seems torn about what to do. 
Finally, he sighs deeply. I guess I should, he starts to mumble. Should what? I ask in a clear voice. Thank you for getting my wallet, he finishes, albeit with disdain in his voice. You're welcome, I reply. It seems he's got some manners left still. Kane turns away from me. Come on, there's a drugstore across the street. Yeah, your point? He faces me with an annoyed expression. Do I have to spell it out for you? He barks at me. Huh? Don't be intentionally vague, I snap back. Kane points at the drugstore. Bandage. He points at my knees. Bleeding. Then he pokes his own chest. My treat. I raise an eyebrow at him. What's with your speech? Were you a caveman in another life before? Probably. Kane's face suddenly turns reddish as he stomps his foot on the ground like an impudent child. I'm saying I'll treat your wounds. Then, without waiting for an answer, he grabs my wrist and pulls me along. Hey, I yell out, my eyes tearing up from the pain. It hurts to walk, be careful. Kane walks ahead, slowing down his pace, but he doesn't let go of my wrist. I can see that the tips of his ears are bright red. Again, dominant my ass. I'll take another sip. I really have no idea what to expect of this brat, but I follow him across the street regardless. Mm. Also, as you can see, I like, I got so much money and I just, I'll show you the shop. There's nothing left here. There's stuff left there, but there's nothing left here. There's nothing left here. I'll probably never use it, but if it transfers along, then I don't mind. Dunk -dunk 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 -dunk. I don't know how I keep getting myself into these situations. Regardless, here I am in a drugstore along with Kane scanning the aisles for self-help care. Kane crouches down to see all of the bandages on sale, picking a random one off the rack. Sterile bandages, adhe adhesive bandages, I don't know which to get. I don't need a bandage per se, just something to clean up the blood and sterilize the scrapes, so antiseptic wipes. Kane picks a different package from the rack. It's a box filled with sterile pieces of cloth to clean wounds with. An antiseptic wipe. <laughs> He looks up at me and shakes the box. Good enough, no? I nod my head. That'll do. Kane stands up straight, his eyes focused on reading a des the description on the back of the box. He almost doesn't notice that he's invading my personal space, and if he continues to walk forward without looking. I try to move away from him in time, but due to the stinging pain in my knees, I'm too slow to evade Kane, and he bumps into me. Kane's cyan eyes fly wide open, and he backs off in surprise. Sorry, he says quickly. Finding myself feeling bashful at the proximity between us, I look away from him. It's okay, I say. Let's check this out. I pause before adding, and don't steal it. Kane rolls his eyes at me while clicking his tongue, then walks up to the register. Surprisingly, he really does pay for it. Not that it was expensive or anything. It's only some sterile cloths. But I didn't expect him to. Not from a thief, anyway. Yeah, because thieves are so one-dimensional, right? When we're outside, I sit down on a bench next to the drugstore. Kane plops down next to me and hands me the box. I open it up and then lift my skirt to reveal the cuts on my knees. Spicy. Before I start cleaning away the blood, I turn my head to look at Kane. When our eyes meet, he gives me this puzzled look. I hand him the box. You do it, I say. What? He asks, confused. It's your fault I got hurt in the first place, so you clean it. What the fuck makes you think I'll be your slave just because you fell down and hurt yourself? Kane asks, completely insulted. I smirk at him, because I got your wallet back, so be a good boy, clean my wounds. Kane has got this incredulous expression on his face, like he can't believe someone would ever ask him something like that. He then gets up from the bench. I could just leave right now, he spits out. Hmm, yes, you could, I respond absentmindedly. Kane stands in front of me, glaring down with those feisty eyes of his. And never bother with you again. All very possible. I stick out one of my legs and smile up at him. Kane balls his hands into fists, clearly agitated by my attitude towards him. It's only fair, I think. I've helped him out with so I've helped him out so many times now. It's time he showed me some compassion as well. I don't think he views what you do as helping him. But sure. Ugh, I hate you. Kane grunts as he bends down in front of me. In this position, I kind of feel like a queen and he's my loyal servant, bowing down at my feet. Feels good, to be honest. Kane angrily tears open the box to take out one of the cloths. He then begins to clean my wounds, touching the cloth to my knee. I shriek out. I forget that stings like hell. Sit still, you baby, says Kane as he gently dabs the cloth against my skin. Don't look at my skirt, I say, not knowing what else to say because it kind of hurts and I'm trying not to cry. Kane snorts loudly, too late. I clamp my legs shut in lightning, in lightning speed, my face suddenly burning with a blush. You didn't. Kane rolls his eyes. I was kidding. Now sp Spread those legs for me. Don't say it like that. I feel icky all over. Kane doesn't wait for me to comply and simply lifts my leg with his free hand. His fingers feel warm to the touch. 
Then he applies pressure against the wound, cleaning away the blood. I'm getting used to the sting and start to relax a little, but there's this weird anxious feeling whenever I, uh, I get whenever Kane touches my skin. It's hard to shake off. He's quiet as he diligently cleans up the cuts. His fingers are so very careful. I'm surprised he's acting this gentle. I guess I expected him to be rough to get it over and done with, but Kane has got some finesse to his movements while well, he is a thief. It's almost like he uses his hands daily to have his movements be so fine turned and so so fine tuned and so delicate. He works with metal. Okay, fine, whatever. Ah, that's only because he steals, isn't it? He's got to be quick-handed and swift when it comes to snatching something away without being seen. After a little while, Kane pulls away, blinking his eyes up at me. There, done. While my knees still do still hurt, at least they're clean of any debris and blood. Putting a bandage on them would not be wise for this kind of scrape. Thank you, I say. It's the least he could do after all of that. Kane stands up. Now we're even, he says as he throws the cloth into the trash can next to us. Even? He thinks we're even. If we're going to keep score, then I'm pretty sure what he did just now doesn't even come close to evening up our score. How about when I took his drunk ass home? Do you really not remember me? I ask him. Kane cocks his head to the side. Remember how much of an annoying pest you are? Yes, yes, I do. I roll my eyes at him. No, I mean from before. Before what? The party from half a, half a year ago. Kane grows quiet as he sits down next to me again. I can tell he's making an actual attempt to try and recall that night. He sighs and runs his hands through his fluffy hair. I don't remember much, he admits. I guess not. You were quite drunk. Did we really meet back then? I feel like mess- I don't agree with this spicy take necessarily, but sure. I feel like messing with him a little, so I intentionally try to be vague. I stuck my hand down your pants, I say flippantly. What? And I saw you naked, I point out with a grin. I didn't expect Kane to turn red in record speed. No, you didn't. You're lying. It's the truth. Kane grabs a fistful of red hair, looking lost and scared. But that doesn't make any sense, he gulps loudly. Did we... Did we what? I ask innocently, knowing full well what he means. You know, his blush has gotten even more red as he looks away from my eyes. I lean in closer to him and whisper in his ear, You mean, did we have sex? Kane buries his red face into his hands. Yeah, so dominant, dude. Oh my, I didn't expect such a big reaction from him. I feel really gleeful right now. After all the shit he pulled, it feels good to be able to put him in his place and embarrass him. Though I should probably tell him the truth. I move away from him and sit up straight. You were super drunk at the party, so I brought you home. You asked me to take the keys out of your pocket, which I refused to do, by the way, and then I helped you take a shower. Kane peeks through his fingers. Did you really see me naked? He asks in, the, in this tiny voice. That is unfortunately true, I say with a sigh. You were so drunk you got out of the bathroom without wearing any clothes yet. Kane looks a little relieved, so we didn't... I shake my head. I left after that. Ah, is all he says. A silence grows between us, making me feel uneasy. I twiddle my thumbs together, unable to really say anything. I don't know what I should say now that he knows it was me who helped him out. Kane keeps quiet as well, his blush slowly fading away. It's starting to feel very awkward now. What's your name? The sudden break in silence startles me. I blink a few times at Kane, tilting my head to the side. My name? I repeat. Yes, stupid, your name, Kane pouts. You haven't told me. Why wasn't there like a trigger warning for this dude being like an asshole to you it's valky i say valky hearth kane huffs finally i can put a name to that face of yours i bring a hand to my cheek you're saying that as if there's something wrong with my face everything is wrong with it he replies nonchalantly like he's so fucking rude like and it it feels different from neil you know what i mean hmm i turn away from him and fold my arms across my chest as i recall you said i was pretty when i was at your apartment I can say a lot of things that aren't true when I'm drunk. I feel my face heat up. Why is he suddenly insulting me like this? Then I feel his red hair touch the side of my cheek, his breath tickling my ear. He's suddenly really close. Thanks, Valky, he whispers in my ear. I feel a shiver run down my spine. When I whirl, whirl around to face him, Kane has already gotten up from the bench and is walking away from me, his head hanging low. He's rubbing the back of his neck. I can tell it's red along with his ears. I can only stare at his retreating back. At home, I check on my emails. One of them is from my old Professor Berg. I've been corresponding with him about the lecture I'll give at college. He wants me to bring a few pieces of the clothes I've made to show the rest of the class. We've settled on next week, Friday. I'm supposed to be open that day, but I guess I can take a really long lunch break. So far, everything has been going well for Olympus. 
After replying to Berg and confirming the date, I browse around the internet a little bit more, which reminds me, I should check out that website for the fashion week. I eagerly type in the URL. A flashy website greets me, full of models running down the runway. I don't think models run down the run run runway, but alright. Wearing really cool and extravagant designs. I feel a little humbled after seeing the pictures. I'm much less high fashion than these, these designers. I prefer to design clothes for people that would actually... I just prefer to design clothes for people that they would actually wear, not these avant-garde designs. However, it's still a great chance to showcase what I can do. Perhaps I can even net some clients who like my work. Fashion is all about networking anyway. Seems the deadline to sign up is the end of May. I still have a month left then. The fashion week will start on August 18th, a Saturday. Ugh, I have to pay for it. I guess you pay for a confirmed spot to showcase your talent. It's a little pricey, especially combined with the fact that I will have to spend money on materials as well, but in the long run, it's worth it. I bite the bullet and sign up for fashion week in August. That's still four months away. I've got plenty of time to come up with a lineup. To brainstorm a little, I visit the Daisy Dots forum. Sometimes people post designs over there that really inspire me. Plus, I still need to make sure everyone's abiding by the rules. Which is when I noticed there's been a ton of reports since I last checked. When I check one of the reports, it seems a user reported a troll. I read the comment. Seriously, this looks like a potato sack. Go back to design school, you're trash. The troll is back. Oh no. They really aren't giving up. I hate it when members can circumvent the ban by simply getting a new IP. You can never seem to get rid of them. I quickly ban the troll once more, telling them to stay gone. So rude. Right, I will see you in the next one.